It was the summer of 1976, right? I have only a few vivid memories from that time because we used to be high all day long. Let's just say that going from shrooms to other psychotropics, it had been a peculiar summer. Long story short, one night we met Joe. And that night, we joined our bodies with that of Joe. It was a mystical experience. You seem all smiley then. But he was surrounded by a halo of sadness that is hard to forget. True. He always seemed to be preoccupied about something. Oh, remember that magic trick he did? Where he swallowed a razor blade? It was bloody and gory as hell. But afterwards, he was absolutely fine. How sweet. Oh yeah, that's how he could afford LSD. A few months later, he left the commune we were in and never came back. Gone. Vanished without a trace. Until... Just a sec. What the hell have I thought that? Uh, darling, <laughs> darling. Darling, darling. Ah, thank you. We saw this two years ago. He hadn't aged a day. Or at least that's what he seemed like. Maybe that wasn't him, but we had to find out. So we packed and traveled to Jaeger, a small village that apparently wasn't even on maps. We should almost be there. Well, I, I am quite positive we're lost. Did you take a right turn here? I did turn right. You always have trouble telling your right from your left. This is my right. You'll never learn to tell the difference, darling. There's someone there. We should ask him. Hey! Hey! We're trying to get to a town called Jaeger. Could you give us directions? Get lost, you fucking hippies. We don't need your flower power bullshit here. Because we've got guns. What's wrong with him? Come on, let's get on the van and turn back. I can't turn around here. We have to go forward. Whatever. We're going, we're going. Just put the gun away. Stay down. I don't want anything to happen to you. I still get the chills thinking of that day. Luckily, I was there. 
Why did you have to be so mean to us? Shh, hush, hush. It's all right. We've never hurt anyone. And this guy tried to kill us without even knowing I, us. I know, I know. He just had a hot-headed attitude. All right? Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. It's all right. Company. Am I right or am I right? Yeah. No. I mean, not really. Well, are you or aren't you? Uh, we're filming a documentary. On hunting, yeah? Well... Uh, you've come to the right place. To be honest, we're vegan. I don't give a damn where you come from. Look at this. I caught it myself with my bare hands, my teeth, and me foot. We must free it. Uh, can't you tell it's dead as a dodo? Say something, he scares the shit out of me. Um, could we possibly ask you something privately? I was wondering when you'd get around to it, and you can ask me, and I'll answer you now. Yes. You are in the presence of the greatest hunter known to mankind. How do you think I got this? Skill, wiles, knowledge of the animal. I have to think like the fish. Before I go fishing, I smear my face in fish scales. I rub my groin with the insides of fish. I lick their eyes to become one with the fish. Do you like licking eyes? <clears throat> you may find it very interesting. We're going to eat it tonight. A barbecue with a little Chianti, maybe. And you two are invited. You can stay at my place. It's only got one bedroom, but I'm sure we can come to some arrangements. your arm? No. That was a missus. Uh, she chopped it off when she found me sticking my my dick in a pig, but it's not what it sounds like. It was completely innocent. I can tell you that story too, if you like. Yeah. To tell you the truth, uh, we're here to ask you about someone. 
Oh, yeah. Joe. Jim? Joe. 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 Jeff. Joe. Jeff. Jeff. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, he was a close friend of mine. He used to call me Bear Raper as well. Did yeah. he? Yeah, because my close friends do. Like, I think we're going to be real close friends, you know. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, Joe, you're real close. You're a big man, aren't you? Well, Are you some big, say. <laughs> big everywhere? Of course. Yeah, right. You know, it all matches, does it? <laughs> A normal human being would get lost in these woods, but not me. I never get lost. I am a hunting god. This is the only picture we have of him. Poor sod. What happened? Boar. Two years ago. Oh, poor thing. Oh, really? If it had been me, I would have killed the ball and eaten it. But him... ...gored him to pieces, ripped him to shreds. A hand over there, a foot over there, penis down there. Small. That's how we knew it was him. The boot. That went up the bear's wrong owner. This is a sacred place. The hunters come here before they go out to get luck for the day. I'm not really a fan of the hunt. Everybody likes hunting. But I... I... Darling! Shh. This is a sacred place. You've seen the boot. You've met the man. And now you must go home to your city friends and tell them that today has been the best day of your life. Godspeed. Godspeed. Now what the heck are you doing? Shh. This is a sacred moment. Besides, it might have the answers we're looking for. The boot did talk to me. Told me some interesting stuff. But nothing about Joe. He'd lost hope. But, before leaving for Jaeger, we put a website online called Do You Know Joe? And when we got back, we were amazed at all the baffling responses we got. What? Oh, this? It's Baba Ganoush. Dear Tony and Casey, Joe served our country with my grandfather. Or oh, this one. I remember that man. He won Pac-Man's World Championship in 1984. We had dozens of them. And it seems as though Joe hadn't aged a day. Tony was never into technology until he discovered porn. That's not true. I've always been fond of technology in spite of our lifestyle. It's a way of keeping in touch with the world. A connection through the ether with all of the planet's energies. Of, out of all the emails we had received, there was an extraordinary one from a lady in Wisconsin. She wrote us, there's a picture hanging in the house of my great-grandmother that portrays that man. Wow. How old was Joe? What is Joe? For sure he was no vampire. Vampires don't walk around in the daylight, but Joe did. Besides, I met a vampire once, and I can assure you he had nothing to do with Joe. He even bit me. The mark should still be here on my neck. Are the scars visible? Scary, right? Of all the pictures we had of Joe, there was some sadness in his eyes. It felt like he was always worried about something. Something that he wouldn't or couldn't tell anyone. Did he really die in Jaeger? Oh, but it doesn't end there. Someone called Pogo writes, I own a video with that man in it. But if you want to see it, you must come to me. I 
suppose this is it. I guess so. Knock three times, then once, then three times, then say, Ya, Ya, Cthulhu, Patang. Ya, ya, Cthulhu, Fatang. Uh, is anyone Pogo? This is the one. Pogo, it's us. Can you open the door? Instructions. Ya, ya, Cthulhu, Fatang. It's Fatagan. Jesus Christ. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Fatagan. Fatagan. Do you want to open the goddamn door or what? You've been given clear instructions. Ya, ya, Cthulhu, Fatag. Coming. So, you're looking for this elusive man called Jai. Does he owe you money? Did he do you wrong? Plain curiosity. You disappoint me, Tony. Do you want some? We're vegan. Oh. So basically you eat nothing at all? Exactly. We live off fresh air. Cool. I had no idea such a high level of veganism existed. We don't really live off air. Would you be so kind as to show us the video? Absolutely. It's already in the machine. Wrong remote. Now really pay attention. No worry, sweetheart. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. That was freetastic. Amazing. I'm speechless. Tape had been sold to me completely anonymously by this extremely weird guy. He used one of those voice changer tools, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, I didn't ask myself too many questions about it. I have to deal with people like that all the time. Well, I don't know. I got a tape about a year ago. Joe gave the tape to him. The man who sold him the tape was Joe, no doubt. Joe couldn't have died two years ago, killed by a boar. Joe is still alive. Or better yet, he just can't die. <sighs> Eternal life.
I can handle this. I like the contact with plastic. I'll be fine. All of which were directed by the same person. Someone called Ronald Goodman. Every day, we're one step closer to Joe. More water, please. We can only hope that this Ronald Goodman was still alive. We found out that this is Mr. Goodman's favorite restaurant. He's been coming here for over 25 years. Good evening, my fucking cooking slaves. Who are these shitbags daring to sit at my table, Gentia? Please join us, if you will. Gentia! Where the hell is everyone in this place? I wouldn't share my table with some hippie fucks. I'd take a shit over your precious flowers. And what are the cameras for? Are you shooting some shitty cooking show? He doesn't seem like a very nice man. Oh. We would like some information about one of your best stuntmen, Joe. Fearless Joe, as you used to call him. Oh, for the love of Satan, why didn't you say so in the first place? Gentia! I'm so sorry, sir. I was in the restroom. I, I didn't hear you coming in. Did you wash your hands, you cruddy girl? Excuse me. I really hope she didn't. <laughs> Will you have the usual? Yeah, sitting with these hippie cunts. Let me eat. I'll tell you whatever it is you want to know. Joe's here, we darling. Joe was incredible. The most ballsy stuntman I ever worked with. He used to jump off tall buildings without protection. Explosions like no big problem. He used to crash cars without a seatbelt. Not even a scratch. You could not even bruise that motherfucker. Oh, I remember a time it looked like it broken his neck falling from a crane. It was when we were making my masterpiece, Police versus Cop. <laughs> That scene had a car chase across two crane booms. Yeah, naturally, it didn't work. Joe fell from the car window. Bam! He hits the ground. A gory mess! He's been declared dead for five minutes. And then, like after some sort of fucking macumba, right, he stands up and he says, can we do one more take? Can we do one more fucking take? Can you imagine the size of the balls on that man? Fucking nut job. Made me very rich, though. Mr. Goodman acts in good faith. He's a bit gruff, but he always buys me nice gifts. An Asian girl? Oh, yes, of course, of course. Good looking rice eater, that one. Oh, Joe met her on the set of my seminal masterpiece, Ultra Ninja Revolution. Whoa! 
Lotus Clan, I will have my revenge. I don't think so. Damn. <laughs> that frog scene is one of my favorites. Uh, truly epic. But you know what was a blast? The final scene. Fucking awesome. I love you, Golden Swallow. Me too. Ah! Me too. And Zack, she stabbed that motherfucker. Her name? You expect me to remember the name of some rice shitting slut? Look it up on the internet, you old fossil hippie. Kelly Chen! I have an amazing wife! Excuse me. I think I need to take a shit. Chen Sia! But 
When death comes ripping, where the hell is Joe? Terrific! I fucking love that woman. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay. Come on. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boy. You really watch this crap? You don't seem like the types. Anyway, that would be ten pounds. To be honest, we came here to ask you about Joe. I've been obviously engaged to Joe for two years. We started hanging out way before. We couldn't go on public because I was underage. He was my first true love. I will never forget him. After we shot that video, everything changed. He was sweet, always nice to me, such a kind heart person. After that video, I just could not see him as the same way as before. I've had nine years for years. I will be in therapy. Sometimes I still suddenly wake up in the middle of the night with the word ringing in my ears. I'm perfectly fine, sweetheart. Nothing's fine. For Christ's sake. You, you can't show your old face and then get up like this. as nothing ever happened. <laughs> So, so, so sensitive. That's why I love him. I wasn't happy anymore, and then he left. Joe knew, but the truth is, I still want to be with him. This is the first connection with him since a long time. We were at a loss. All of the pictures, the contacts, Anyone that had anything to do with Joe all turned out to be a dead end. Pass me that. We thought long and hard. What we were about to do was not right. But we had to know. At that point, we realized that Joe was more important than anything else we were involved in. Oh, yeah. Emails were decreasing, and we were at a dead end. Darling, you already said that. Right. So we went back to Pogo, and had him make a copy of Joe's video to put it online. But when we got back, what? we found this in the letterbox. <gasps> Challenge.
The police were on Joe's tracks. I suspected the CIA, FBI, or some other agency we didn't know the name of was involved. When was the last time you saw Mr. Joseph Jonathan Johnson? I already told you. I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you want from me? I was preparing guacamole. The avocados will go brown if you don't let me go home. Perhaps you want a lawyer. I don't trust the establishment. Besides, I have nothing I need to defend myself from. And then he took out a picture of Joe. Why are you looking for Joe? So you do know him? You know that since making false statements, I could arrest you for obstructing justice? Actually, I... You're hiding him, right? Look, I'm not hiding anything or anyone. You dragged me here in my pajamas and I haven't even had breakfast yet. And I have a meditation class at night. If you don't mind, I mean. I have nothing to say about Joe. May I ask? What did he do? He disappeared, as you may have noticed. What I can say is that there is this really bad B-movies production which still has him under contract. Are you really sure you have nothing to tell us about Joe? For instance, this website of yours, right? Well, I have nothing more to say. Go and arrest me if you want, but I'm keeping my mouth shut. You are not being detained. Let me remind you that you came here of your own free will. In your pajamas, right after our phone call. There is the door. You can leave whenever you want. <clears throat> it was a reenactment. We couldn't film inside, so reenactment. In the meantime... Let's drink up to all our lonely best friends. Oh, thank you for their hard to set advice. Friends who find themselves aimlessly lost between painful brain loads. The host on lights... The whole world was going crazy for Joe. Here's to all the shady ladies inside. Oh, sweet, sultry coquettes without a name. Ladies, who wants my big gun tonight? Boom! Boom! Hello. Boom! 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 Oh. I haven't seen it yet, right? Ouch! Easy! Oh, no. Easy! It's okay. <laughs> of course you haven't seen it. We'll show you. Could that be Joe? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks, darling. But you know, I I got positive vibes. Uh, vibes that could come only from Joe. And my wife is never wrong. They think they're so clever. But you can't fool an old paranoid conspiracy theorist like me. It's been parked there since I was interrogated by the police. But now I'll take care of it. It's our neighbors, darling. He parks it there every night. I don't mind. Nevertheless, we had to do something for Joe. We could head to Jaeger. He was too smart for that. What we needed was some bait to 
Casey, dear, were you expecting anyone? Please don't tell me it's the Smiths, because I really don't think my karma can handle them right now. That woman always complaining about everybody, making those faces like, I'm so much better than them. Actually, I'm not expecting anyone, and the Smiths, they moved to Provence at least five years ago. Oh, fuck. We're going to die. Tell Casey I love her. Sweetheart, don't come in here. So, this is how you welcome an old friend? <laughs> A little longer. Just a bit more. Ah, oh, Joe. Those sad eyes. What I was trying to say is that living for over 200 years is crap. I'm sick of it, bored. I don't know what happiness is anymore. I had to switch identities so many times because people start asking questions. So what would you say to them? Hey, you know I'm fucking immortal? He admitted it. He really was immortal. 
And also, I cannot stand to see others die while I don't change a single fucking second. I tried to hang myself, beheading, arakiri, electrocution. I filmed every single attempt. I wouldn't recommend electrocution, by the way. It melts your eyes. All the vitreous humor comes out. It looks like egg white. Nothing works. I'm still here. We will help you out. And Joe smiled. A smile that warmed my heart.
good about it. I know. Casey and I grow it ourselves. Only farm to table goods with us. I'm fucked up. <laughs> you still able to read palms? What are you talking about? Come on. Surely you must remember. You're stone and I need to piss. <laughs> oh, Edward used to read palms. That's. That's. Oh my. What? That's the solution I was trying to remember. Anwar! Okay. No idea what you're talking about. Anwar. Anwar was one of Tony's first love interests. She was 15 and taught him all about love. Those black eyes, dark as night. I'll never forget them. Anwar is a shaman. According to Tony, she is one of the most powerful shamans he's ever met. One time, she brought a dead cat back to life. And he is angry as fuck, and we had to kill him. She removed a curse from Tony. For some time, he was convinced that he was damned. Because every time we attempted to make love, suddenly he couldn't get it up. It's that witch! That lives across the street, he said. She did it because I refused to get dressed because I was painting with my body in the garden. That's it. I'm done. We can leave if you want. Uh, give me a sec. Can you feel this breeze? It's Mother Gaia caressing us. Wonderful. Oh. Finally, you find me, the mighty Pero Carrero. Pero. Okay, okay, you can stop hugging me. Yeah? Okay. Is Anwar at home? Who? Anwar, the greatest shaman of all time. Wait. You tell me you're not here for the interview? With the mighty, only one and only Pero Calero. Well, interview. Uh, I think this is going to take longer than we expected. Make yourself comfortable. Yeah, I want to see where this is going. Well, actually, <laughs> you still can't say no, right? You no. bet. Yes, yes. The interview with me. Okay, I wait ten years for the interview to happen. With the mighty Pero Calero. And now, do you want to see my signature move? Yes. Hey, please. Mitch, we must have come to the wrong house. Sorry, we are leaving. No. No, no, please. Don't leave. Please. I don't see nobody for 10 years. It's you. I dream. Please. Please stay. Hello, greetings, my fans. 
You know, maybe many of you wonder what happened to Perro Calaero. Shut up. Perro Calaero and my manager and I, we say, he will say, maybe you team, uh, maybe it's time to disappear. So we wanted to stage a little disappearance act. And we go away for 10 years. And I come to here. And I hide. And I disappear. And I come back to the nature. Back to Pollo Loco. Back to where Perro Calero come from. Because I need to come and relax and come time for me. And my manager say, don't worry. They come to find you. And finally you found me. Finally you find me. But now I come back. And I got a message for Calabron. Calabron, remember me? Remember my face, Calabron. Remember that time when I take your face and I smash you in two? And I do the last move I ever made. I come back, but not without you. Thank you. And this is my story. Totally worth it. Come on, fellas, we should get moving. We have a shaman to find. Fellas? Wait, 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 wait. Please, don't go. I want one match with any one of you. Whatever you want, El Perro Caladero. No, no, no. You. Why? Why I, did you I, do that? I, I, I don't know. Is she okay? Perro! Perro! Oh, we'd better go now. Yes, I'd like to speak with Madame Bones if it's possible. That's her stage name. What do you mean she's dead? I see. Well, I'd like to speak with Miss Blackheart then. Could you repeat that, please? Yes, yes. Okay. Thanks for stopping. I need a moment. Send your positive energy to her in the sky. Anwar, can you hear us? This is for you, sweet Anwar. These last days have been intense. These two deserve to be immortal and to spend together every fucking day for all eternity. Look what happened. That guy was as hard as a rock. What? Anwar? Poor, poor thing. Today I lost a piece of my heart. But I look ahead to the future and I see that there's hope for Joe. And this comforts me. I'm not the climber I once was. We're almost there, at Miss Blackheart's farm, Anwar's daughter. Apparently she became a shaman just as good as her mother. Jasmine. Jasmine! Yes! Oh, my. What did she say again? I knew you'd come back one day. Anwar became pregnant with Jasmine just before I met Casey. I was in love with a lot of women at that time. But Casey, she stole my heart right away. That girl had a lot to tell us. Anwar didn't tell me she was pregnant because she could see how strong my love for Casey was. Now I'm a father.
<laughs> He's not crying again, right? So this, in broad terms, is Joe's story. It's a complicated situation. I'm not sure if I can... Don't worry, sweetheart. I know you can make it. I can try. Well, we have already tried everything. One more try won't kill anyone. It's a complex ritual. It requires significant groundwork. I have all the time in the world. <laughs> what does this ritual consist of? It's a transfer ritual. So we transfer his immortality to another spirit. And what about the spirit to whom you transfer his immortality? It doesn't matter once they welcome it. Don't look at me. I don't want it for sure. <laughs> I've never had a fight with Casey. Never. This was the first time. We both wanted to be immortal without giving consideration to the feelings of the other. I feel so guilty about telling those horrendous things to Tony. Thirst for power drives you blind. In the end, we went for an impartial decision. Stop! Stop! You've been bickering for four fucking hours! The mortality is mine! So we do as I say. Now come here and grab one each. The one who gets the longest will have this fucking damnation. And shut it up! I can hardly hear myself think. I won! The Devil's Rock is near. It's a very ancient and complex ritual. It consists of four stages in total. The first three are preliminary, and the fourth one closes the circle. The first one is a simple cleansing process. Whatever happens, you mustn't interfere with the ritual or it won't work. Do you understand? My heart is pounding. I'm going to be immortal. I still can't believe it. It will work. This time it will. This is a purified stone. It helps to get rid of all the impurities you've come across on your path. You rub it on your left hand until completely red. I just wanted to hold Casey tight and caress her. She was really suffering. And all because she wanted to help Joe. Such a good soul. Step two. Now on your knees. Put your hands on the rock and don't move for any reason. I'll see you in 12 hours. You've got to let their spirits mix with the magical energy as it emanates from the stone until they become one. It takes time to achieve this. Oh, I'm glad you're back. I'm not sure if I'm too nervous. Yeah. You weren't born in the rest. Well, I mean it. Don't relax too much. Are you sure you haven't taken your hand off the rock? 200%. Absolutely. Step three. Listen to me very carefully. For this phase, you need to have complete sexual intercourse. It wasn't necessary at all. I hate that manipulative bitch. Take that for everything you put my mother through. Don't worry, babe. Do it. Wouldn't be the first time. We don't need to shoot this. Step four. <laughs> with this stone, you have to work your way to Joe's heart, then grab it with your bare hands and devour it. Eat 
this. Eat the fucking heart. Don't puke. I can't. Eat it. Good job. <coughs> You're now an immortal. <coughs> I'm going to prove it to you now. This is my last message to the world. And all I want to say to you before I go is... Thank you. For the first time in ages, literally in ages, I'm scared to die. I did this awesome. Unbelievable. I've been through all this struggle and now I don't want to die anymore. <laughs> if Joe no longer wants to die, then it means I... I've made up my mind. I want to die of old age, or at least I'll let nature follow its course. Maybe I'll crawl back to Kelly on my hands and knees, taking her out to dinner and to the karaoke where we will sing all night long and we will age together finally. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. It's an awesome feeling. One way or other, we had to check if the ritual had worked. I hope it worked. I asked Joe to stay a few more days until we had verified the effectiveness of the ritual. I also needed some moral support to cut my wife into pieces. So, let's go with the first test. Ready? No, 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 no. Please, stop, stop, stop. Uh, and maybe uh, we could start from, I don't know, a, a, a finger? Your call, I'm just the executioner. Joe, can you give me a hand with this? Now don't move, because I must be surgically precise. Ready? Oops. Joe, get me something. I might have cut a little too high. What a couple of fuckers. <laughs> we shouldn't, we shouldn't. How long should it take to grow back? Well, I don't think this is how it works. I guess she has to die before she can uh, regenerate. Ah. Oh. 
I have an idea. Casey. <laughs> this reminds me of when we first met. Tony, focus. Oh, right. <clears throat> Casey, listen to me. It doesn't work like this. You have to die before you can regenerate. Good. But choose carefully how you want to die, because this is your first time, and it has to be special. Very good observation. Do you want the buff? Hmm. What? Johnny. You're going to have to speak louder, because I'm having trouble hearing you. What's the time? Ah, it's 9.45 in the morning. Cause of death, natural causes. Dear Casey, look at you. This is her first death. I'm so excited. Joe? <laughs> how long should it take? Well, how long has it been? I lost my sense of time a long time ago. Casey? Casey? Oh, God. Please don't wake the fuck up, Casey. Casey! Oh, please, please, no! Casey! <laughs> Not your fault, man. <laughs> Casey, Casey, oh, I'm sorry. Fuck you, immortality. <laughs>